Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern HealthSpan. There have been several clinical trials investigating the safety and efficacy of NMN when taken orally, but not intravenously. In Japan, there are now clinics offering intravenous NMN. So in this trial, they looked at the safety of this process. Here is the paper. Nicotinamide mononucleotide is safely metabolized and significantly reduces blood triglyceride levels in healthy individuals. Let's have a look at the details. An increase in NAD levels alleviates age-related disease progression. NMN has been shown to raise NAD levels when taken orally and has been shown to be safe. However, the efficacy and safety of intravenous NMN has not been studied and remains unclear. So in this study, they administered NMN intravenously to 10 healthy volunteers. The procedure did not affect electrocardiograms, pulse and blood pressure, nor did it impact metabolic markers in the liver, heart, pancreas and kidneys. Showing that IV NMN is safe. The process also increased blood level NAD and reduced triglyceride levels. The author's conclusion is that IV NMN may help with diseases associated with high triglyceride levels. A little more detail on the study. It was open label, single arm, that is, there was no placebo group to compare to, and so of course the participants knew that they were being given the treatment. There were 10 participants, five male, five female, aged between 20 and 70 years old. Before the administration, the participants fasted for 12 hours, and the administration was a one-time infusion of 300 milligrams of NMN in 100 milliliters of saline. Blood and urine was collected and measurements of body temperature, blood pressure, pulse and oxygen saturation were taken at 30 minutes, one, two, three and five hours after the administration of NMN. Looking at the results, first the physical measures like body temperature and blood pressure and some key blood markers, TP is total protein, ALB is albumin, A slash G is the albumin glucose ratio, BS is blood sugar and HbA1c. All of these are stable, not that HbA1c will be expected to change in such a short time. For the lipid panel, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol were all stable, but there was a significant drop in triglycerides of about 75%. A similar drop has not been reported in oral trials because drugs administered intravenously can more rapidly reach and burden organs. They check the key markers for liver, pancreas, kidney, and heart. I will not go through all of these, but there was no significant changes. Though I do see that some, for example, bilirubin and AST did trend up. Markers for immunity, inflammation, and blood health were all stable with no significant changes, showing that the NMN did not damage the red blood cells. And finally, NAD levels. NAD plus and total NAD both increased significantly by about 20% which was maintained through the five hours, though there was an unexplained dip at the three hour mark. They said that NADH levels tended up, but the fluctuations were too much to provide a significant result. They also looked at CERT1 activation, expecting this to increase with raised NAD levels. But again, the fluctuations were a bit too much to be able to be significant. And lastly, looking to see if activity of NAD consuming enzymes, CERT1, PARP1, and CD38 increased or not. NAMPT, part of the NAD salvage pathway, was significantly increased. NANOG, whose activation is modulated by PARP1, was unchanged. And P16, which is affected by CD38, was significantly lower. Looking at the mechanisms, the authors think that the high level of NAMPT was acting on the fat cells and reducing the amount of fat free fatty acids in the blood, which in turn lowered the triglycerides. And that the high levels of NAMPT was caused by the elevated CERT1 activating AMPK. They proposed that this could continue to feed into the salvage pathway, maintaining NAD levels. I wanted to cover this paper as I have not seen any other reports on intravenous NMN. The study showed IV NMN is safe and raises NAD levels in blood cells while also lowering triglycerides. It would be interesting to see how long the higher NAD levels lasted and what the impact would be of long-term administration. 
Intravenous administration is more expensive than oral, so it would be good to see whether it's worthwhile over a long period. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon. Mm -hmm.